Hey everybody and welcome back to the Garage Gym Experiment Podcast. My name is Adam, that's Jake, and we're back again for another great episode. On tonight's episode, Jake and I are going to talk about the Kabuki interview he did yesterday, some reactions to that. Uh, I'll let him know what I thought of it. Hopefully you've listened. If you haven't, go check it out. Um, we have a home gym con update, some product features that Jake would like to see, new company spotlight, and then we have some new products. Those are coming from Uclips, Kabuki, and Abmat, some survey results, and then we posted a Q&A on our Instagram, so we'll check out some of those questions and give you some answers. Jake? You got a little bit of a cold? You're just a little no. tired? You a little sleepy? Do I sound sleepy? You got a little raspy. I feel, well, that's my sexy uh, MC voice, Jake. All right. Um, thank you, Adam. Um, so, Rich Galgano interview recap. Where do I begin? Um, so, I would, so I think uh, I got, a, I had a few questions. Oh, well, actually, first of all, I would say this, this podcast has gotten I've received more texts and DMs about this podcast than any of the other 250 podcasts that we've done um easily um so quite a, quite a bit of feedback I think the biggest question I got was like how did this even happen um I think partly because people wanted to know like what was was there an angle somewhere um but no, there was like, so what happened was if you've seen on Instagram, flex marks, the spot has been, Mark has been posting a lot of his use of the transformer bar. And I think he has the squat saddle, he um, does, yeah. but he's been posting a lot about that. And he reached out and was just like the new owner is, he seems to be really engaged and interested in like just like what I have to say about the product, you should, you should do a podcast with him or you should reach out to see if he wants to do a podcast. And, um, I was like, yeah, that, I, I was thinking in my head like, yeah, that, that sounds good. Um, it would be interesting to hear from him. Um, but he's kind of like uh, an intimidating guy. He didn't necessarily scream like I want to do a podcast. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so I gave it about a week and then another guy within the industry, a gym equipment manufacturer reached out and was like, Hey, I was talking to rich about home gym con, or he said he mentioned home gym con. And I was like, all right, um, I'll, I'll reach out. So I sent rich a DM and he, uh, my DM basically said, Hey, I'm Jake. I run this podcast. I'd love to tell the story about whatever happened in the last year or so, um, or whatever you'd like to share. And I also do this. I run this event called home gym con, uh, I, I, something like that, really simple. And then maybe like three days later, uh, and I left my phone number and maybe like three days later, I got a call from him, a random call from him. I missed the call. I called him right back. And he was like, let's just talk off the record first. Uh, so he kind of, he went over the story, but not, so I kind of knew what to expect. He didn't go into as much of the details, but I kind of knew what to expect going into the podcast. Um, so, but, but I did, I did kind of have an idea of what to expect. He, he was like, I probably won't be as. I'll probably be a little bit more not he didn't say cautious, but he's he, he I think even in his head he was like, I'll do the podcast, but I don't know exactly how I'm gonna go about it um so I actually I, I was like, all right, well, we'll do this um just so you know we can edit it, we can do this or that like if we don't want it to go, we don't have to um blah 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 blah, and then it was like four and I even I wrote. I wrote like an outline so he knew what to expect. Uh, I sent it over in Google Docs. I don't think he ever opened it. So, um, so yeah, four or five days later, we we did the interview um, just yesterday, actually, and I just posted it like two hours later. So, so that's that's kind of the the story. Um, it was it was really me reaching out to him 
to try and do the story. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, has have gotten a lot of feedback. I think a lot of people were were not only was it like an interesting story, um, but it was just cool to hear behind the curtains of a lot of the stuff that had been happening and like get a real life example of, you know, business gone wrong. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I took a lot of business lessons. It was, he's definitely a very impressive entrepreneur, which I took a lot of notes. Um, let's see. I mean, what, what about you? What about you? What do you? Oh yeah. The initial reaction, uh, just so everyone knows, uh, Jake, myself and Kurt Locker, we're in a, uh, we're in a, uh, text thread together and Kurt listened to it like right away and made a comment. And the thing is like, my jaw was on the floor from like the minute, like he pushed play. And I was like, Oh, I have to get to that. So I had to run that night. I was like, all right, I'm going to listen. And it's true. Like a lot of podcasts you listen to with like business owners and stuff, like there's a few nuggets in there. Like, Oh, that was a good, I like that part. But this one from the minute you push play to the end was, it was an incredible story. And it was just like very raw. Like this guy's like, yeah. this is exactly like, he didn't like, you know, he didn't pussyfoot around some of the things. He just said it how it was, which is like, I really appreciated that. It gave me, yeah, some appreciation for like who's running. Not that I didn't appreciate like the company who Kabuki was and stuff. I didn't, you know, I didn't feel any type of way before, but I don't know. He just seems like an honest, like hardworking, bust your ass, like business guy. Like, yeah, it was, uh, if you haven't listened, like listen and you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. But from start to finish, I was like, Oh, he went there, huh? Like the honesty was crazy. Yep. Um, so some reactions I got, like, you know, you can read the comments, um, on like YouTube and oh, Instagram. I'm going to do it. What are you talking? I mean, most, most people are like very interesting interview. Um, I think the DMS, I rec- the DMS and text messages I received were like several people said my jaw is on the floor. Um, I think like one, one like quotation that rings in my mind is like nightmare fuel. Um, a different business owner said that. So I think this is just like a really good lesson as to like what can happen if you, you know, don't treat your customers right. Don't, um, I mean, yeah, obviously I don't want to like do, I don't want to talk down too much, but, um, but yeah, I mean, very interesting interview. Sorry. I was reading the comments. Yeah. I mean, I'll just read a couple of them that, that kind of, a lot of it says yeah. this answers a lot of questions. Like people had questions on like what was going on over at Kabuki. Um, and, and it did, it, it answered all the questions. If you ever wondered like, why is it that like you, you'll get all your, even like back to like their boom. And then like the, there, there was, I don't think it's, um, confusing anyone when I say like, there was a lot of like frustration with, um, some, some customers like talking about how things were, um, happening oh, when they yeah. bought things. So yeah, people are saying I answered those questions too. And it definitely does. Yeah. It was, it was definitely like a Jekyll and Hyde type type, like, um, company because like on the outside, if you didn't make an order from them, you weren't in the forums reading people like talking about their customer service issues. You would think that it's like a successful company making in millions. Um, you know, I definitely think, I do think it's important to emphasize like ye, they did run into lawsuits with like a Lyco that had to have hurt them a lot. Um, you know, there's quite a bit of, uh, like copycat companies that, that, uh, took their products or just like very similar products that accomplished close to what these products did at a low, much lower rate um, came to the market. So I think a lot of it was, was that too, but I think ri- like rich clearly had a, a bone to pick due to many reasons. Um, and he, he backed it up with like logic and numbers and dates. And, um, so yeah, I, I mean, I, I think like there is a lot that goes into it, but his frustration was more with like, the lack of urgency or the lack of like not downsizing 
three or four years ago when you are just like doing things at a, a normal rate. Uh, so, but yeah, I, th- I think I'm going to take a guess and say everyone who's watching or listening right now has already seen the podcast. For sure. We'd love to know what you think. Um, send us messages, throw it, throw them in the, the comments. I would love to do, you know, just more raw, real interviews like that. So if there's anybody that comes to mind, let me know. I'll, I'll try and see what I can do to get them on the podcast as well. Um, I think that covers it. Actually, there is one more thing I want to say on, on this. Uh, I think it will, you know, we did this podcast. He, he was very engaged, but at the same time, you know, he's running, he's, a, he's running a big company right now. And he, <laughs> He mentioned that he doesn't run three million dollar companies. It's my favorite. Quote. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Um, like, how much time and energy is he going to want to invest in this? So, I, I do think, like, I, I concluded the interview. Like, it'll be very interesting to see like how these next few months go, and then very anxious to see how the next few years go. So. I do think of a lot. A lot of it will come down to to that. So I think that that'll be interest, something interesting for us all to see. Like, how are these next few product releases? Do think that he's he's chatting with some other smart people in the industry, and you know, if he finds the right people to collaborate with, that might be a good way to sustain this as well. But did he allude um, to Dean at Black Widow? Is that my guess? No. No, no, I don't. I didn't hear that. So, well, he said he was talking to a manufacturer, and he, I, where's where's Dean come from? Is he a Tennessee guy? Is he a Carolina guy? No, he's Long Island. No, he's New he's York. He's Long Island. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. There okay. was one. Okay. He said there's now someone, and he goes, up. "You probably know who it is." And in my head, I was like, "Oh, Dean, North Carolina." But like, no, Dean's not down there. So, there, there. I will also say with this interview. I was so mind blown that the follow up questions were actually kind of difficult to think about. Um, you said that in your text. I didn't. I didn't hear that, but you said that. Yes. So I. But but yeah, that that was part of it. And then one time he, I did mention like there's nobody else making specialty bars in the U.S. other than Rogue. I was wrong, but at the same time, there isn't anybody making them like at quite as intricate as intricate as kabuki is like dean from black widows making them uh salad bars making them but they're not quite as like intense as the some of the products that like rogue and kabuki are creating so just wanted to clarify that that there were a few people that were like hey black widow makes specialty bars yes and i i I like instantly felt bad about that i was like oh i should not have forgot about black widow but anyways let's move on uh, so home gym con update. Let's Good. make this one quick. Well, one one really one one thing that I think really makes this event special and unique is that it's basically all gym equipment companies. So it, it makes the event space also look really good, um, as opposed to and not downing any other event, but like the Arnold there's only a handful of gym equipment companies. It's mostly like supplement companies. It's mostly celebrities. Um, it's mostly competitions, whereas this is more niche. It's more specific. Um, so we do have a rule in place or just kind of like a, a guideline to where we only want like a single supplement company. And I think that gives them, it gives the supplement, the fact that we have one supplement company, it gives them quite a bit of exposure and it helps us keep the, it helps us keep it more, the more focus on the gym equipment companies. Um, and I do think we have like the perfect partner this year. Um, so Jocko Fuel will be our official nutrition and supplement sponsor. It does seem like they're very, very excited about this opportunity and it is just a really, really uh, solid match. Agreed. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. So, and we can just move on and I'll, um, we have three out of the five competitions ready for people to sign up, but I will, I will talk more about those next, next time we do a podcast. All right. Next up, 
little little section. So early in the week, I was just like working out and I was like, oh, I wish I had this. Oh, I wish I had that. Oh, I wish I had that. So decided to kind of put this together in a section of this podcast. So the first idea here is updating the GoRx platform. So I think the GoRx platform is really cool. It's basically like the Airbnb for home gym owners. Um, or like if you have a home gym, you can list your home gym and people can pay a, pay a fee or you can train them out of your home gym. Um, if you go to their platform, it's very cool. Um, I just think that they, like someone or they should expand it to just like all home gym owners. Cause you go there and there's like a map and it has like this list of home gym names and then it has like a list of all their features. And I feel like it's, it'd be something that a lot of people would like to do. Um, most specifically, most specifically because you could see like other home gyms within your area. And I feel like it'd be a really good way for people to connect. You could say like, oh, this person's home gym is only five minutes away. Maybe I should message them, see what's going on. Um, so that's, that's the first one. I do think that would be cool. I, I highly suggest you just like go to the GoRx platform, take a look and let me know what you think about that one. I think that would be fun. It also seems like quite a bit of, quite a bit of work, but they already have everything in place. I feel like they could just change it up to where like you could have like an on feature, like you want, you want people to come train at your gym or off. Um, and then and then you could kind of go from there. <sighs> All right, number two. So I'm a big fan of my infinity arm from um, Exponent Edge. I simply think there's a lot of potential for some sort of attachment like that that can work for like pulley systems from the rack. So something like that is on the rack. You can use the pulley system. And then also with a landmines, like the... Um, What's the one from Rogue called? You know what I'm talking about? I know what you're about? talking about, but I, it, the Pritchett pad? Yes, yeah. the Pritchett pad. So like a Pritchett pad times infinity arm. There's, an, like, there's another, a, a number of different seal row pads. But something that you could use with the pulley system on the rack, because there's so many like all-in-ones now. And then also with a landmine on the other side. So that's, that's one idea or one feature. Um... And a lot of these come from my my use of the Force USA G15, which, you know, their all-in-ones are great, but there are, like, some drawbacks or just, like, not everything works entirely perfect. Sometimes I, I find myself wishing that it was taller, uh, most specifically, like, with the uh, cable. So um, I did a little bit of research on the all-in-ones out there and... I think like all of the sizes are based on like what's going to be able to go into most home gyms. Like what's the easiest to make, which totally makes sense. However, I think there is a market for taller ones. So if one of the companies can create a taller one and emphasize that the arms are hot or that the, the, uh, posts are higher, I think think there's something there. Um, also just in general, I think more customized rack heights. So if you go to a typical website, they'll have like, uh, an 80 inch, 90 inch and a hundred inch. I think there's quite a bit of different sizes that would work. Um, so like if I had a, um, nine foot garage, I would really want something that's four inches less than nine feet. So I think, I think more customized rack heights. And then I think like, it'd be amazing if you could order it down to the inch. Um, I think that would be cool. Um, and then back to like the, the all in ones. So, you know, Adam and I have discussed on this podcast and you've seen, you also see it on product reviews, but there's a lot of like fun rack mounted functional trainers that aren't necessarily ideal ideal for lat pull down which is like a very important lift for a lot of people so ultimately a lot of people either choose um to 
go out and buy something separate or they just kind of deal with what they have for rep, um, lap pull downs. Um, so when, when I've played with my force USA all in one for lap pull downs, if I'm on the seat, it's not great. Cause you're like at an angle and you're pulling it in. However, if you can like straddle the post and get all the way underneath it, I had to, it, <laughs> I know I knew you were going to laugh. But if you can get underneath and get the right angle, it's pretty solid. It's just really hard to, the angle is real, is pretty good, but, but like it's tougher to get to heavier weights without pulling you up. So I think like there's potential for just like somebody to optimize lap pull downs from the ground, whether that's like adding a pad so that you can put under over your hip, that's like right there or some sort of some sort of like station or just something even to put on the ground would be nice too and this one this one i know is a very good idea and whoever does do this next one will 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 do well um and a lot of this comes from my experience at ursa where i tried a an alico smith machine and the Alico Smith machine actually had a good neural on the Smith machine and every other Smith machine I've ever seen, I've ever used has been average or like slippery not chrome great, bar. Not great. Yeah. Slippery chrome bar. So I think, you know, we've seen a lot of people tease like rack mounted Smith, Smith machines. I think like whoever puts a little bit more effort into like the neural of the bar is going to do much better than anybody who does not. I think even if it adds like a hundred dollars to the final cost, it's worth it. But yeah, that, that's that Smith machine from Alico at Ursa was just like blew my mind after using like other all in ones for years that it, it, it really caught my attention. All right. Well, correct me if I'm wrong here. Does the VTS, do you insert your own bar or no? The, is that, am I even saying it correctly? Is it the BTS? The Smith yeah, machine? You can. Attachment? You can. Yeah. What about the Bells one? Can you insert your own bar? Um, I think there's going to be multiple options. Gotcha. Yeah. But I know, I know the VTS, there's also like a, there's a non bar of your own bar that you insert. So, mm -hmm. gotcha. so, um, so there's, I don't know. I don't know if it's, that's well knurled or not. So, and then lastly, I actually thought like when I was, when, when I s started this list, I was like, oh, this is going to be the next podcast up segment. I thought like, oh, I'm going to have like 20 ideas. And then, <laughs> and then time kind of got away and nah, it d didn't happen. But, but here's my last idea. And it kind of also morphed into like products ideas, <laughs> um, <laughs> but whatever. So we have mentioned a single post as like a good idea, like a, an optimized single post that you can put on the wall. Mm -hmm. Um, you also see like people make like bat wings and, and adding other posts to their racks. So my idea is actually a fifth post, but it just goes through the middle of the back. So it essentially turns your rack into your power rack into like, it has to be used on the other side as the power rack or a half rack. Um, and you can still put, you can still put your plate storage on the side. And then in the middle, if you just put like the middle of the back half rack, you put a single post, you can use that as like for like that infinity arm. You could use it for like the bulletproof isolator. You could use it for a dip attachment. And this is, this is best if like, there's like how my rack is right now. Mm -hmm. So like you can use it on, yeah, you're 360. Open. You can use yeah. it on bo both sides, but I mean, even, even not, you could like put a ditch dip attachment there. You could yeah. rotate a number of different things. I think like, I do think that's, that would be cool. Yeah. It'd have to be like, you know, going off the back seat, so have to have like, you know, some space. I actually, like when I first read that, I thought that was like, meh, but then you started naming things you put on there. And I was like, I don't like things on my posts when I use it. So 
that I actually like that idea more than I initially thought. Yeah, I did. You, dude, it's I grown think, on me. I think yeah. I think um, the it can't, uh, it can't sit directly in the middle though, because then like you know you, you go to take a bar off of me, it's gonna be in your way. You go to put a bench on there, it's gonna be so it'd have to sit back a little bit. Which so I don't there think would be, would be a no. Big I issue. don't think it, I don't so. <clears throat> I think there would be some sacrifices, like you'd always have to wheel your bench in from the front, uh, but that's like minor. So I actually, so I've ran out of, a lot of this came because I've, I've ran out of space and I put my bridge built bar storage right behind it. So like, it's hard to explain, but, but I, a lot of this comes from me not using the back at all anyways anymore because of mm-hmm. where I put the bars and it's not that big of a deal. I, I think, I do think that, I think that would work. I think it would be cool. Yeah. Uh, I think the, the rack headers for most racks is, is, um, a deterrent. So you'd have to have like, just like what you have with just like a yep. standard post. Yeah. I, I thought I really wanted like the big thick rack header. And then the more I have this just post with like the little label in it, like, I like it. Yeah, so I couldn't even do it with my current setup with the right. with the rack header. Yeah. But fifth post power racks, someone's gonna do it and they're gonna make a lot of money. Maybe. Yeah, that one. That one. Yeah, <laughs> I know. that one actually like grew on me. I didn't think I liked it. I'm wondering though, like you connect it off the back, something's got to hold that bottom in, or there's unless it's taken weight. I don't know. There's 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 some engineering there, but smart people can figure it out. Yeah, you might have to add like some. Some like uh, leg Even extensions if, or something. Yeah, little feet. Yeah, little yeah. feet. No, I I think I think so. All right, let's move on to a new company spotlight. So Rigmates. So this is just an example of somebody making cool stuff, and it's only because we, uh, so many of us love our home gym so much. But these are mag pens with cool designs on it so the pictures so this is rigmates um so i believe they just started shipping their products this month they are also going to be at home gym con so um you know they might even have more designs by home gym con but you know this there's these are just what they came out first so i think the first ones are flames and then there's also a wolf bear and lion so these are really cool designs. If you go to their Instagram account, they also have some some really unique advertising that's that's very well done, um, specifically for these types of products. And you know, just wanted to give them a a, a spotlight. And I think uh, this will be it'll be cool to see how where they go from here and what kind of designs they come up with. Yeah. Have you seen these before? This is the first time I'm seeing them. I saw when they jumped on Home Gym Con. And uh, okay. you had told me when you were describing like who the company was, like yeah, they make like little um, for yeah, you said it like basically ornaments for your for your rack. This is the first time I'm actually like seeing them. It's cool. Yeah, it is cool. And I think I think um, they cost like sixty a piece. Oh, okay. For like a one inch, so like yeah. more than more than a standard one, but like I think they're like hand painted and everything. Like they're they're very cool. Yeah. There's like a cat. Um, hey, um, club. I don't. I can't see how to pause it. Hopefully, it's just not on repeat. Hold on. Wait for it. Okay, good. It stopped. Nice. Um, that was kind of cool. Maybe we should implement that more into <laughs> our next. Need to know when it's coming. I was like, oh, something broke. <laughs> that was. <so> <laughs> that was cool. All right. So new products number one from Uclip. If you watch the clip. <laughs> That's what the noise was coming from. It was uh, an advertisement that I copy and pasted here. So it's called the back bar, and oh, I'm not gonna be able to name, name off all five things that said in that video. But it works as like a bar jack. It works as like a close grip um, pull down. It worked as a flat grip tricep extension. I think that was one mm-hmm. of the things. Um, but just a versatile bar from the creator creator of the U clip. Um, 
looks seems like a pretty cool option. I think it's it's on pre-order right now. Next up, squat saddle from Kabuki. So this is a pad that you use for like belt squats, and um, it can be used as like a, a harness. And then also, I think it can be thrown on a barbell as well. So um, we'll see how that goes. And then they partnered with Abmat to create the pad for that. And then lastly, Donnie Thompson's annual partnership with Abmat. This this year it is uh no, for the for the Halloween season I should say. This year it is the werewolf pad. And it looks like Ro- I can't remember if Rogue is selling it on or I can't remember if Rogue sold it on their website last year, but I did see that they're selling it on their website this year. So was the Franken pad last year? Is that what it was? Franken pad, and I can't remember what the other one was. Or the Franken pad might might have been two years ago. I can't remember. But always Halloween theme, always coffin shaped. I like the design on that one. Yeah, these are those are cool. All right, and then let me. We've we've gone a little longer, so let me run through these survey results, and then we can uh, answer the QAs and call it a night. Um, so number one, we. Last week we went over like specific strength sport interest. Um, this week we find out that only 23 percent train for a specific strength sport. Nine uh, percent are running businesses out of their home gyms, similar to what we've seen in previous years. Um, when asking how many people utilize their home gyms, 39 um, percent are saying just one. 43 percent are saying two. Eight percent are saying three, and then ten percent are saying four or more. That lines up pretty well with the amount of people running up businesses out of their home gym. Uh, workout times are spread out pretty much throughout the day. The leading vote getter was after five p.m. though, thirty-three percent, twenty-nine percent, or eight a.m. Um, or before eight a.m. and then. Um, the rest are during the day. And then we also asked how long have you had a home gym? Um, so kind of, kind of broke this out into like longer than the founding of garage gym experiment in between that and COVID during COVID and then more recently. So about 40, well, let's say, uh, about 18% have had them for over seven years. Uh, between four and a half years and seven years is about 22 percent 49 percent are within the two to 4.5 years um, so kind of in that covid time frame and then only 11 percent have had a home gym less than two years and then asked a, another more specific how long have you had it with before covid uh, or let me let me rephrase that so we asked if you, when you started a home gym, was it, <laughs> how did I ask that? Um, so 13% are saying no after. Okay. I think the question was, did you start a home gym during COVID and 33 per, sorry, man, I'm stumbling on this one. 43% started during COVID. So I'm guessing like within that one year, one and a half year-ish time frame of the beginning of COVID to whenever people say COVID was over. 44% say they had it before COVID started. And then 13% kind of along the lines, of, kind of similar to last, um, have started it more recently after COVID. Q&A. Let's yes, check the questions phone. and answers. It's Q's and A's. Last time I checked, it was only CARP again, but there's multiple questions. Oh, bingo. All right. Number one, who's stronger, Jake or Adam? (laughs) Right now? (laughs) You. You think? We have our certain lifts. That's true. Yeah. You'll always uh, be better at bench. I don't know anymore, Jake. I I used to be. Okay. Well, thank you. I used to be really good at bench. Okay. Because that, that would probably be the only one you have me right now in. I can curl a lot. Does that count? Okay. That's, no, that's kind no. of like a... <laughs> okay. You, you'll always be able to curl more than me too. Okay. 
So I, got two. I don't know. Overall strength, uh, know. for sure you have me right now. Like if we if we lined up, even if like the big three and just said like, hey, highest total wins, like you'd win for sure. Um, even if we picked like specific exercises and like we went for like three rep maxes or something right now, yeah, like, yeah you'd beat me. When we're both at our peak, what? we'd trade like lower body, like you'd crush me for sure. What do you weigh right now? I don't know. I get, I usually get around 200 around this time of training. I've got you by like 15, 20 pounds then right now. Yeah. I usually sit at, at about 215. Yeah. And then yeah. I get down to around two. Yeah. All right, let's go on. Coach Carp again. <clears throat> what is one of your go-to protein me- protein snacks or meals? Oh, yeah. Like I I I bowl everything. It's um some type of root meat, rice, and then uh, I do um, Greek yogurt for like sour cream, and I mix it with sriracha, make it nice and pink, and then boom, melted cheese on top. Of course. That sounds more like a a meal though. Yeah, that's my meal. Oh, I guess he, your meal? he says snacks or meals. Yeah. yeah. I'm, a I'm not going to say my cookies. Well. I'm not going to say my cookies, Jake. So I'll tell you my, my go-to protein. Okay. But it's not cheap. Um, but it's not cheap. And I drink them in like five seconds. So there's two of them that I've been getting. The I, And I swear, this first one, I'm not lying. It's the Jocko like Molks that you buy. Uh-huh. I buy like a twelve pack, what and do you, they're mulk? like. Did you say Molk? Yeah, it's like little protein drinks. Okay. Um, they have like I just got the banana cream. Those were pretty good, but the issue is they're like um, I bought them for Prime Day. That was the only Prime purchase I got. So, but they're like the it's those, and then what are the is like the protein milks. In the grocery like store, they're like, yeah, they're like five oh, bucks. So good. They're so good, <laughs> but I drink them in like three seconds. Oh, it's a chug. It's, it's a, a chug. Gold. And yeah. it's like five bucks. Yeah. The Jocko ones are a little bit cheaper. Have you had, I only had one and I loved it. it uh, who makes it? This legend is, is popping up, but it's like a pop tart. It looks like a pop tart. Dude. Dude. So good. Dude. Dude, I, I've been getting those. I've I been only getting had those one too. in my life, and they're awesome. But yeah, so I'm, I okay. So I've been getting those. I've been getting like they're also like three or four bucks. But I've been picking yeah. those up. Um, but the other night I had one of those protein milks. And hold on, fair life, the fair life, the fair do, life. Do you say milk? Milk. <laughs> no, you don't do that. What more milk. Time? Yeah, there. Milk. No. What am I saying? Milk. That sounded better. It sounds like you're milk. saying milk with an E. It sounds like milk <laughs> instead of milk. Milk. I guess I That's am. Better. Milk. Yeah, there you milk. go. Milk. Thank you. Milk. I was like, this no. Okay, I, I do just say milk then. I say it like that. But I had the, um, what's it called? The Quest cereal. Oh, they have it's cereal? Like Quest. Yeah, it's. I bought it again. I bought it again and just had like the the protein the oh, fair geez. life with the it was good it's the best protein cereal i've had but it's have you it's had magic not spoon? Great. It's, it's better than magic spoon i've never had any of them i was just asking the magic spoon yeah, yeah. i always get like it's my guilty pleasure is uh those lenny and larry cookies jake knows this and i, no. I get them all the time but i mean we're not fooling ourselves. They're, they're candy bars so i i know that but yeah i still enjoy them but the 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 legendary pop tarts or whatever, I don't think they're as bad for you as as those cookies. That's good to hear. Yeah, I think they're a little bit more legit. Um, your favorite specialty bar? Mars bar. Okay, and mine is yeah. ri- truly the Transformer bar. Yeah. Um, does Jake have anything else for the listeners? Never. Um, all right. F M K coats. Sweatshirts or hoodies? What's a, what's the difference between a sweatshirt and a hoodie? Like a sweatshirt is like what I'm wearing without the hoodie. Oh, without the hood. They're yeah, killing that one. You look good. I don't wear them though. I would kill that one too. Okay. I would marry the hoodies and I yeah. would f the coat. But I feel like <laughs> the situation when you really want to f is like the one that you like. I don't know. Yeah, there, there's always I some love a hoodie drawbacks. Yeah, 
Yeah, I would. I'd go hoodie. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna marry the hoodie, so I can wear it forever. Yeah, yeah for sure. I'm not a big so coat guy, similar. but it's nice to have. Well, you need yeah. it. Yeah, especially where we live. Yeah, still go. All right, great Q and A. That's it. oh sweet. Hey, uh, uh, gym life update. Uh, the the treadmill lives. So you know this, but you know if people are listening and like, oh my, I have to know. Did Adam's treadmill? Yeah, it's it's okay, guys. <laughs> so <laughs> you can sleep at night now. <laughs> no, but um, it it you know you could, you could put it away, like fold it up, and like if it's plugged it in, plugged in, and you fold it up. They can like um, mess with like where it plugs in. So I think I may be going to bend some stuff in there. But anyway, it's fixed and it works great. And I got Phew. not enough training. I know, Jake, all's well. And um, yeah, it's been working great. So I survived last week. All right. Well, we wish you luck on your run. No, oh, thanks. Thank you. There it is. <clears throat> All right, well, that's going to do it for us. If you like tonight's episode, be sure to keep your eye out for new episode releases wherever you listen to podcasts, and be sure to follow Neural News. Are you not subscribed yet? What is wrong with you? Check out the link below. Sign up for more Home Gym content. Uh, we have Home Gym Con coming next summer. Uh, we want to see you guys out there in Louisville, Louisville, or Louisville. Uh, Jocko Fuel <laughs> announced uh, today. So that's our nutrition sponsor, three competitions for you guys to sign up. So if you are, uh, is the three that they can sign up for strongman, Olympic weightlifting and grip, savage strength games, savage not strength grip. games. Gotcha. Not grip yet. Okay. Well, if you're one of those three athletes and you want to sign up, please do so now get your hotel secured at the Galt house. Um, take care of all that now. So you can just sit back, relax and, uh, get ready for the show. Jake, anything else left for the listeners? Cool. All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening. We will check you next time. Bye.